Wednesday, 11th of September. Making friends. In the morning, Terry and I venture outside to join the boys racing around the orphanage schoolyard. One bloke with wavy brown hair whips by, trying to catch a little blonde lad who looks just like him. The little one runs up and hides behind me, hugging my knees. Hey, mate, I say. Is that your brother you're hiding from? He giggles and crawls through my legs. Alan, come here, you worm, said the other boy. Derek, you can't catch me, he calls. But I can, I say, scooping Alan up and flipping, flipping him upside down. Help, help, jiggles Alan. Thanks, ah, uh, says Derek. Ken, and this is my friend from home, Terry. How old is this little chap? Five, says Derek. I'm 12, so Mom said. I have to be the grown-up and look after him. Ma said the same thing to me, says a boy with a thick Scottish brogue and a younger brother in a tote. I'm Billy Short. Peter's 5'2". I can barely keep hold of him. Derek and I exchanged glances. How old are you, Billy? asked Derek. Nine, he says. Nine? Well, old man, we'll help you out. I say, thinking we'll have to look after Billy, too. Alan starts to tickle Peter and they roll in the grass like puppies. They make me grin. You chaps are lucky, I say. I've always wanted a brother. Careful what you wish for, says Derek. Oi, there they go again. Peter, come back, yells Billy. Shrapnel. Oi, look at this, Alan, says Derek, grabbing his brother by the hand. Shrapnel. We stop and scoop up the gray metal bits, pieces of exploded bombs and guns to add to our collections. I found some back home, I say, traded the biggest pieces for marbles. No marbles here. It's just something we do. Pick up the pieces of this war. Wrap our hands around the danger. Try to contain it. Derek finds the largest lump and hands it to Alan. It's for luck, says Derek. For luck, crows Alan, the shy kid. A skinny, fair-haired boy with curls slumps against the wall watching us. I ask Terry, who's that? I think his name is Paul, says Terry. He doesn't talk much. I shout, hey, Paul, come help us. He looks startled, but then he takes his hands out of his pockets and walks over slowly. What are you doing, he asks. Collecting shrapnel, I say. It's pieces of bombs, says Alan. Want some? You're playing with bombs? Sure, I say. They're smashing good fun. The other boys laugh, but Paul just stares. They can't hurt you now, says Terry. Here's one. Paul takes the twisted piece of metal, but when he turns it over, a small ragged edge cuts his thumb. Ow! It falls, and a small red drop oozes by his fingernail. No thanks, he says, and he stuffs his finger in his mouth and walks away. Paul, wait! I shout after him, but he doesn't turn around. Runaways. Alan, let's, says Derek, but Alan is nowhere to be seen. We were so distracted by Paul and the shrapnel we didn't notice that the little boy slipped away. Again. They're around here somewhere, I say. I'll help you look. Alan, Peter, we call, jogging across the schoolyard. Maybe they're hiding. Look behind the wall. No one there except Paul, slumped on the ground, nursing his cut. Paul, please help us, I say. Their brothers are missing. Paul jumps up and follows. Have you seen two little scamps about five years old? I asked a group of girls playing hopscotch. No, sorry. Why, what will I tell Ma if I can't find Peter, says Billy. They're probably just playing hide-and-seek with us, says Derek. Alan, the game is up. Come on out. Maybe they went inside. We push open the orphanage door and peek in their classrooms. No one. Could they have drawn across the lawn, asked Paul. We gaze across the grass, the grass leading up to the open gate. We entered last night on the bus. Cars speed down the road. I wince to think of five-year-olds crossing it. We should tell the escort, says Paul. But Ma trusted me to take care of Peter, says Billy. And with that, he's off toward the gate. Billy, wait, shouts Derek. Paul and I have no choice but to follow. Sanctuary. Paul stops short. I heard laughing. He says, run, turning around and gesturing to a large willow tree. Pushing aside the leafy branch to spill into the ground, we peer inside. Peter and Alan are sitting on either side of one of the lady escorts. They lean on their shoulders, smiling up at her with adoring eyes. She's telling them a story. Hello, lads, says the lady. Want to join us? Derek, 
Billy, I shout, motioning them over. We found them. We all creep under the covers of the branches and listen to the story. It's cozy inside. I close my eyes as the words run together and ripple over each other. I fall down, down, down into the story. I feel safe for the first time in a very long time. Rude awakening. Ken, wake up, says Terry, shaking my shoulder. You've been asleep forever. I sit up still groggy, yawning. Where are the others? They've just gone in for tea. Time to eat, yes. Then I can go back to sleep. Too much excitement, too many strangers, too much unknown trigger surprising feeling. I realize I'm longing for home with all its warts, longing for my own bed. Sirens cut the evening calm. Escorts shout, run children, run, as they spill out, spill out of the classrooms. Get your gas mask, take cover. Tara and I tumble inside the shelter with the others. I ask the escorts, when are we leaving? When do we get on the boat? Soon, son, soon. Another sleepless night jammed together, elbow to elbow, knee to knee. There's no let up, no escape from the bombs, no matter how we try to get away. Bombs in the city, bombs on the coast. Is nowhere safe? Little John Snow cries and cries. <laughs>